Integration, choosing an appropriate trigonometric substitution. This is something that comes right at the end of the integration and calculus part of the A-level specification because it's hard, frankly, and it requires a lot of the different skills that you've learned um, along the way. Let's go. So here are a couple of examples of the sorts of problems that the skills we're going to go through today um, will allow you to solve. So here is a list of quite similar looking integrals. They're all fractions and they've all got a 1 and an x squared somehow in the denominator, but they're all subtly different. However, they might look subtly different, but they're actually very different in the way that we solve them. Now, these two at the top are on the A-level specification, and these other two are, require further math skills, because they don't require trigonometric substitutions, they require hyperbolic trigonometric substitutions, uh, and those are just just different as they require different identities to solve uh, so you don't need to worry about those I've done a separate video for the further mathematicians on these on this set of skills I'll put a link to that in the comments these two exist as well you might think why didn't I include those the first time round well actually these two do not require trigonometric substitutions you might spot that both of these denominators are difference of two squares. So you can actually write them like this and then the method you need to use is to split those up into partial fractions. So the rest of this video we're just going to concentrate on these two types here. Right, before we go any further you need to uh, refresher with your trigonometric identities. These, that there are a few that, that are in the formula book, um, but you just need to know these, and I highly recommend that you just commit these to memory. This first one here, we call the Pythagorean identity, or the original Pythagorean identity. It's called Pythagorean because it's something squared plus something squared equals one squared, but it also comes from Pythagoras' theorem. Um, the reason this identity exists is because of Pythagoras' theorem. Now, that's going to be useful. You also need to know the other two Pythagorean identities. So if we take that original one and divide it by cos squared theta, then that reduces to this. 1 plus tan squared equals sec squared. And if you again, if you take the original identity there and divide it instead by sine squared theta, you get the equivalent one for cot and cosec. It's only going to be the, these first two that are going to be useful in the rest of this video, but I've included the third one for completeness. You also need to know the double angle formulae. Now these are derived from um, something you get in the formula book, which is those things there on the right. But again, you don't want to be working these out every time from the formula book. You really just need to know these. I highly recommend committing these to memory as well. Of course, to work them out, um, you use plus here and you let a and b both equal theta. So you get sine of 2 theta. And if you substitute everything over there on the right, uh, you get 2 sine theta cos theta there. If you do the same for the cos uh, double uh, compound angle formula, you get cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. And if you do the same for tan, you get that one there. Now, actually, this cos 2 theta identity is not actually very useful uh, in practice. It's the other two I'm going to write here that are more useful. And you simply get those by eliminating. Let's start by eliminating sine squared theta using this identity up here. You get that. Or if you eliminate cos squared theta using this identity up here, you get that one there. So as I said before, you need to learn those eight identities. Okay, no excuses, just get them learned. Pause this video, try and write them out from memory, and then 
do it again and then do it again until you can just know them. You've got to just know them. Okay, almost there. So to press on with this video, to do the selecting of an appropriate trigonometric substitution, you need these two. So of the ones we've just written down on the previous slide, those are the two you're going to need. There's also a double angle formula that you'll need for the final question that we look at. You'll see that this is just a rearrangement of the first Pythagorean identity. Great, right, let's do it. Here is the first one. So in order to solve this, we need to use this identity. Can you spot over here we have 1 plus thing squared, and over here we have 1 plus thing squared. So that thing is tan, tan theta, that x there, you can think of as being tan theta. So that's the uh, substitution we use. I'm going to use u because it's just more traditionally used in uh, trig substitution, but you know, it doesn't matter, you could use theta here as well. So if we use x is tan u, then of course with integration by substitution, the first thing you should do is differentiate your substitution formula to get a relationship between dx and du, which we're going to use in a moment. Then our integral becomes 1 over 1 plus x squared, of course is now tan squared u, and our dx is from here sec squared du. Now our denominator here is of course using this formula here, our denominator is just sec squared u, and then those are going to cancel, meaning we're just really integrating 1 du, which is u plus c. Now we shouldn't leave our answer in terms of u, we should convert it back into x, so if we change uh, to make this to make x the, sorry, to make u the subject, we get arctan x, or tan inverse x if you prefer, plus c. Okay, the other one, which is this one, this time it's 1 minus something squared, so we're going to use this identity, because we've got here 1 minus a thing squared. So our thing is sine u, or sine theta. So that's our substitution. We need x to be sine u. Again, we kick off by differentiating it to get a relationship between dx and du. And if we carry out the substitution, we have this. Now, our denominator this time, uh, 1 minus sine squared u is just cos squared u. And the square root of something squared, obviously it just reduces to just cos u in this case. Then they both cancel. And again, we're integrating one, uh, just 1 du, which is u plus c. And again, we just need to rearrange uh, to, uh, substitution formula to make u the subject to convert it back into x. Now let's look at some trickier ones, which don't have ones, or they've, they've just got some extra square numbers involved instead. So you just need to tweak your substitution slightly, and it essentially comes down to square rooting these numbers. But we need to be a bit careful. So in this first one, I know it's going to be using this identity, the, the tan and sec one, because it doesn't have a square root. This one here is going to be a, a sine one, because it has a square root, again here, doesn't have a square root, so we'll be using the tan and sec one again, and the bottom one again will be a sine one. So that's how you tell. It's either tan if it's no square root, or it's sine if it is a square root. But to deal with the 4, we really here need to recognise that um, we need a 4 here instead of a 1. So if I just multiply through this identity by 4, we see that now we, we have <laughs> 4 plus a thing squared. 4 plus a thing squared, 4 plus a thing squared, and a thing is 2 tan u. Of course, when you square 2 tan u, you get 4 tan squared u. So you see that we're trying effectively to make a substitution to get these two numbers the same. We need 4 and 4 something here. Here we're going to need 9 and 9. Here we're going to need either 1 and 1 or 16 and 16 and down here, 25 and 25. 
let's carry on with this top one. Um, now that we've got our substitution, I'll finish this one off and then I'll leave the other three as an exercise for the reader. Uh, we get our relationship between dx and du. Our substitution then becomes this. Sorry, our integral becomes that. Our denominator, 4 plus 4 tan squared, uh, using the identity over here, becomes just 4 sec squared. And then the sec squared u cancel, leaving just 2 over 4 du, which is, of course, 1 over 2 du. So half u plus c is our final answer, except it's not our final answer. We need to convert back into uh, x form. Now, you have to fiddle around to make u the subject here. To make u the subject of this, we need to divide by 2 and then inverse tan. The final answer, then, is half arc tan x over 2. OK, let's clear a bit of space. Um, I'll just summarise that by saying what the substitution is that you need to use and what the answer is. And I'll do the same with the last three. And as I said, I want you to try and have a go at these to see if you can get the answers that I got. So this one, as we said, it was going to be a sine one. And we want to use three sine u so that when we square it, we get nine sine squared u. And the rest of it will work out. You should get this answer. The next one, um, there's a couple of ways of doing this, but I would recommend, if you've, you've got this 1 here already, if we want this to be a 1 as well, then our x squared needs to have a 1 over 16 in it to cancel with the 16. So if you use x equals a quarter tan u, when you square that, you'll get a 16th tan squared u, which will cancel with the 16, you get 1 and 1. That works out nicely to give this final result. And with this last one, which looks horrible, um, it's hard to just look at this and decide on substitution. So you can work out the substitution by thinking, well, I want this, if, if this 9x squared was 25 times something x squared, so something squared, and I know that that something is a sign because of the square root, then you can just write write down what you want to begin with. We want 9x squared to equal 25 sine squared u. And you can then reverse engineer what your substitution is from there. Divide by 9 and then square root. So that's our substitution. You don't need to worry about plus and minus when you square root this because we're just trying to work out a substitution that works. This is our substitution. This is our starting point. x equals 5 thirds sine u. The answer that you should get is that one there. OK, finally, we will just look at this one, which uh, came up near the beginning of the video as an example of the sort of uh, thing you might be able to solve with these skills. I'll just whiz through this, and then we'll finish. Now, I know that the substitution is going to be sine u. Again, we just need to look at the denominator. It looks, more, it looks harder, this one, because of the numerator. And you can get various numerators with these, but just look at the denominator. We know it's a square root 1, and it's 1 minus x squared, so we're going to use x equals sine u. Do the normal thing, differentiate it to get a relationship between dx and du. And then let's carry out our substitution. Numerator is sine squared u. Denominator is square root of 1 minus sine squared u. And our dx becomes cos u du. Tidying up the denominator, 1 minus sine squared u is just cos squared u, and then the square root of cos squared u is just cos u. The cos u's then cancel, and we're left with integrating sine squared u du. Now this requires a uh, another identity, and it's one that we've seen in this video already. Here are our double angle identities, or double angle formulas. And whenever you're integrating sine squared u or cos squared u, in both cases, you use the cos double angle formulas, either this one or this one. Now, you'll see in this case that we clearly need to use the one with a sine squared in. I'm just going to copy that formula over here in terms of u and then make sine squared u the subject. Great. We can throw that straight into our integral now. So now we're integrating this, which you can integrate directly 
to get this here. Now we're almost done. We've actually now got six marks. So this question actually came up in uh, practice paper set four for the OCR provided for the new A-levels. Um, and I was quite stunned, actually, by what, you, what was required for that final seventh mark. And frankly, I'd be surprised if this came up in a real paper. But it was a bit scary when this first came up because people were thinking, wow, is this the sort of skill that people have to do on the new A-level? Because this is certainly considered too hard for the old A-level. So here's what you need to do. This U here, we can just substitute directly from here because U is clearly going to be arc sine x. But to get sine sine of 2u, you have to do some wizardry. So we're going to use this identity here first. I've just copied that down here. Now sine u there is clearly just x. But the cos u, we need to think about. Using, if cast your mind back to the Pythagorean identity, if you made cos u the subject of that, cos u would be the square root of 1 minus sine squared u. Write that down and try and convince yourself of it. But it turns out that cos u can be written as the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, technically, there should be a plus and minus here, but for whatever reason, this uh, question didn't require you to worry about the plus and minus. If I halve both sides of this to get half sine u, because look, we've got a half sine 2u here, sorry, half sine 2u, just halve both sides of that and then substitute that answer into uh, answer to our integral and we have our final horrible looking answer there. Thanks for listening.